Okay, in this video, I'm going to go a little bit faster. The um, one, the first video has the the backbone for what we're studying, and it's it's so important for you to understand that, especially if you're moving forward. Sampling methods are are things that you won't necessarily know what's going on or not in regards to what type of sampling methods are being used, but you need to understand um, what they are. So a sampling method, we're gonna talk about bias now. A sampling method is bias. Now my cat's in here. If some members of the pop, if some members of the sample have a smaller likelihood of being included in the sample than other members of the population. Okay. Everyone should have the same opportunity to be in the sample. That is the only way you can guarantee that it is a good representation of the population. Um, there are many ways to sample a population, um, but there's one goal that we need to keep in mind. I'm, you're gonna hear me say this a lot, is we would like the sample to be um, representative of the population. All right, so now we're gonna start talking about samples. Um, one in which each member of the population has an equal probability of being chosen for the sample is a random sample, the best kind. Okay, um, a simple random sample, and this is, this is, literally the best way you can do it, a simple random sample is one in which every member of the population, any group of members has the same exact equal probability of being chosen. No one can be chosen over anyone else. All right. So let's look at example four. If we could somehow identify all likely voters in the state, put each of their names on a piece of paper and toss them into a very large hat and draw a thousand slips of paper out of that hat, we would have a simple random sample. Okay. The natural variation of samples is, is called sampling variability. This is unavoidable and expected in random sampling. And in large samples, it's, it's not gonna be an issue for us, okay? Because it, 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 the, the differences are more minimal. It's not as important. So in blank blank, a population is divided into a number of subgroups called strata. Random samples are taken from each subgroup with sample sizes proportional to the size of the subgroup in the population. I'll explain this better here in just a second where I can I can draw it for you and explain what's happening. So this is called this is called stratified sampling. Stratified sampling. Okay. Our example will give us a good representation of what that means. So suppose a in a particular state that previous data indicated that the electorate was 39% Democrats, 37% Republican, and 24% independent. Okay. So I'm going to say this is my entire population still. And and now I've got Dems, Republicans, and Independents that are being represented in this population. Dems, Democrats make up 39% of the population. Republicans make up 37% of the population and independents make up 24% of the population. So to get a good sample, what you're gonna do with stratified is you're going to take, okay, we're gonna pull from the entire population 1000 people. 
We're going to pull a grant. Okay. So in order to pull those thousand people, though, we're not just going to pull one Democrat, one Republican, one independent, one Democrat, one Republican, one independent. We're not doing that for the stratified. For stratified, we're, we're going to take for those thousand people that we're going to be pulled, 39% of that thousand will be Democrats. So they'll go to the Democratic pool of voters and they will randomly choose 39%. Well, what's 39% of a thousand? How many voters will they actually pull? Well, 39% of a thousand, you just multiply. So I'm going to give you one example here, 39% times a thousand. But you have to change. Remember, you can't multiply with the percent. You've got to change that percent to a decimal. So that's equal to 0.39 times a thousand, which is 390 Democrats. So they're going to go to the, the sample of Democrats and they're going to pull 390 people. Now they're going to go to the Republicans and 37% of their, of their population is, is Republican. So 37% of the sample should be Republican as well. So again, 37% times a thousand, that's gonna give us 370 Republicans is how many they're going to pull from that. And the last ones are the independents. So they're going to their last sample, the, the last sample here, and 24% of independents make up the entire population. So 24% of the sample is 240. So that's, if you add these three up, that gives you a thousand people but they are re representative of the samples, the, the different subgroups that they were already in, all right? To accomplish this, they could randomly select people among, okay, this is what they're telling you to do. This is, I've already walked you through this. So they could randomly select 390 people from among those voters known to be Democrats, 370 from those known to be Republicans, and 240 from those with no party affiliation, okay? All right, in blank blank, the population is divided into subgroups or clusters and a set of subgroups are selected to be in the sample. So this is cluster sampling. All right, and I'm gonna explain to you what that means. So if a college wanted to survey students, since students are already divided into classes, they could randomly select 10 classes and gives us the survey to all the students in those classes. So let's go back to our population being all of JCC. And let's have our samples, um, or we're gonna divide into classes. So we're gonna divide into everyone who's taking math, everyone who's taking English, everyone who's taking psychology, and break them up into that. And then they're going to select 10 classes that they, they have to survey every single person in there. Remember back in Stratified, they only took 39% of the Democrats or 39% of the thousand. So they only took a, a few, 390 of the Democrats, 370 of the Republicans. This one they're saying, when you break into those subgroups like that, whoever, whichever subgroups you choose, everyone in that sample would take the survey. Okay. So this would be cluster sampling. Okay. The next one I find is um, usually the easiest for students and you need to be able to, rep to recognize the different types of sampling um, because you're gonna have to do that on your exam. So in systematic sampling, every nth member of the population is selected to be in the sample. In class, systematic sampling. Um, I went through and I told you, okay, we're, remember back in, when you're in school and even some college professors do this, so go as you walk in or they go while you're sitting down and go like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then they say, okay, every third, you know, person is going to come to the board. And we're going to do this. Um, the other example I gave you was the police officer who was every hundredth or every seventh car. Um, he was going to go you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, Pew, you know, just to check their their speedometer instead of checking every single car. Pew, 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 that's that's just too much pews. Um, so it's seventh, eightieth, one hundredth, you know, 
That's that's what we're looking at. So here's a really good example of it. To select a sample using systematic sampling, a pollster calls every 100th name in the phone book. I know you don't know what a phone book is, but back in the day, we used to have a book with everyone's name and phone number in it, even their address. So systematic sampling is not as random as simple random sampling, because if your name's Adam Aardvark, then your sister who's right behind you, Alexis Aardvark, is not going to be in the sample. She does not have a choice of being in the sample if, if Albert's in there because they're going to choose Albert and then they're going to count a hundred more names before they get to another one. And Alexis doesn't have a chance of being in it. But you can get some good samples that way. Not necessarily the most representative of the population. That's our most important part. All right, so the worst types of sampling methods are, well, there's a couple of them here. There's convenience sampling. And that sample's chosen to select whoever's convenient. My example to you was, um, if I were to ask each of you while we were in class to, to go get 10 signatures, the first thing you're going to do is turn around to the person behind you, beside you, in front of you and say, hey, I need a signature, sign this. That's convenient. You're not doing anything exciting. You're not going out of your way. You're not having to ask anyone. You know, it's just convenient. It's an easy access. You've all got to freaking do it. So it's the easiest way to do it. The other one is um, voluntary response sample. And I call this the Karen. Voluntary response sampling. I call this Karen sampling because they volunteer to be in the sample. Um, who likes to volunteer their opinion? Just saying. All right. Example eight, a pollster stands on a street corner and interviews the first 100 people who agree to speak to him. Convenient sampling. A website has a survey and asks readers to give their opinion on a tax proposal. This is a, um, it's, it's a voluntary response sample. Or the Karen, if you want to remember it that way. But you still need to be able to know it's, it's a voluntary response sample um, in which respondents well, they volunteer to participate. Volunteer. Okay. Oh, cool. That's it for this one. I'll come back for the next one.